Hola a todos, ¿qué tal? Soy Dani Mantilla y estamos aquí en el Festival de San Sebastián, en un set patrocinado por Legado Ibérico y en el que vamos a entrevistar a talento nacional e internacional. Tenemos también con nosotros a Sole de la Rosa y nos acompaña en la distancia Fred Film Radio. Eh, dentro de un ratito vamos a probar jamón, pero ahora vamos a hablar con Adam Elliot, director australiano de la película Memorias de un Caracol, Memories of Snail. Welcome to San Sebastián, Adam. Thank you. Welcome. How are you doing? I'm good, yeah. I've just been on a plane for 30 hours, but I'm, I'm okay, yeah. <laughs> but here you're going to be treated really well, I promise you. Oh, yeah, yeah. You have uh, taken 15 years uh, to do this film since your debut. Um, why take you so long? Well, it wasn't meant to take so long. <laughs> I mean, animation is slow, but not this slow. So, I mean, look, things got in the way, COVID, um, you know, raising the money for an independent animated adult clay made a film is very difficult so that took a long time uh, I'm also a really slow writer so I did 16 drafts of this script you know I'm very fussy and perfectionist so you know I, I was giving a talk to some little children the other day and they said how long does it take you to make a film I said oh many many years and, <laughs> and this other girl put up her hand she said well I've worked out you've only got two left and then you'll be dead <laughs> <laughs> what has been the challenge the most challenging thing about memoirs of a snail Well, I think this film, compared to my others, has a lot more subject matter that is challenging. You know, we have we deal with homophobia, we deal with a, a religion, uh, suicide. There's a lot of uh, adult challenging subject matter in there. And so it was, it was trying to write a script that was, you know, had a lot of darkness in it, but also we, we wanted to have a lot of comedy and a lot of humour. And so I think the challenge was getting a balance between the dark and the light, yeah. Uh, also, you like to warn on your Instagram, in your bio, says adult, adults only, <laughs> which is something that we can apply to your films. Uh, I remember that uh, Guillermo del Toro used to say a lot during the Oscar season with Pinocchio that animation is a technique, it's not a genre. Yeah. Do you agree oh, with absolutely. that? Absolutely. I'm so glad Guillermo said that in his Oscar speech because I've always believed that animation isn't a genre, it is just a medium. And I get asked all the time, well, I get told, I get emails from parents who are angry with me saying, your films aren't for children. <laughs> I said, no, of course they're not for children. Why are you showing your children my films? Um, so it's something I've always had to battle against. But it's great that people like uh, Guillermo, Wes Anderson, Tim Burton, you know, they're all making films that are, you know, have, have an adult flavor to them. And, and that makes my life easier. And also Miyazaki. Oh, yeah, Miyazaki, of course. And, and, you know, a lot of Eastern European animation, Jan Schwankmeyer, um, it, it is a lot of Estonian animation that's always been for adults, you know. So it, it's great that it's changing, yeah. Your films have a bigger audiences in Australia, in Europe. How has been so in uh, Memoirs of a Snail in Telluride? Yeah, look, I've just got back from America and, you know, Americans are very strange people and uh, <laughs> getting them to... To understand my films has always been a challenge, but they were wonderful. Uh, it, the film had a really great response, and I, I was so relieved because just the Australian accent can be hard <laughs> to understand, and sometimes Australian films will have subtitles so the Americans can understand what we're saying. Uh, but no, we've, it went really well, and we've got a theatrical release in America coming up at the end of October, so... Yeah, they, uh, you know, America's been great so far. I, I love uh, about your films and Australian films that they're kind of quirky because you never know what's going to happen next. The tone of the film, here we, ha we have comedy, drama, sex also. Uh, how is navigating that, knowing how to tell this precise story? Well, I think, you know, as a writer and director, it's our job to push the boundaries because I learned very early that if, if an art form can die if it's not constantly challenging its audience. Um, but, you know, in this film, you know, there's an orgy. Uh, there's, <laughs> there, there's stuff that is confronting. There's a gay conversion scene. Uh, there's a suicide attempt scene. So, you know, I, I really want the audience by the end of the film to come out of the cinema an emotional wreck. I want them to not just laugh, but to have cried and to come out feeling somehow optimistic as well. I don't, I don't, you know, the film has a lot of darkness in it, but I don't want to depress the audience. I really want them to come out of the cinema feeling uplifted. Is there any kind of conversation you would like to, to start with this film? 
Well, look, you know, uh, I've always had a problem with organised religion, so there's some some subject matter there. Um, but look, I don't want to I don't want to offend anybody. I, I really I want the audience to enjoy themselves as well. I want the film to be entertaining. Um, you know, and stop motion in the past hasn't really dealt with this sort of subject matter, and luckily things are changing, as we said earlier. You have done two films. Uh, I read in an, an interview where you said that you like to think in three. Uh, are you considering about your next film? Are you thinking about that? Yeah, w when I was at film school, I came up with this very pretentious idea of making a trilogy of trilogies, three shorts, three long shorts, and three features. So <laughs> I've made seven of the nine, so I've only got two left, and then I can die. Uh, so, yeah, the next film, I've already got the story in my head. I've just now got to put it on paper. How do you feel about the Oscar race? Because now you have been in Telluride and 20 years ago you won an Oscar for a short film. Uh, are you ready to talk about Memoirs of a Style for six months? <laughs> well, look, I think, you know, the Academy Awards winning an Oscar all those years ago was a, a lovely thing. But, you know, I never planned for that. And when I make a film, I try not to think about festivals or, or, or awards or competitions. You know, I really just want to, you know, the best thing about it, being a filmmaker is experiencing the film with an audience and sitting up the back and you're in the dark and you're hearing people laugh and it's very rewarding after all those years of work. So for me, that's the best reward and the best prize is actually knowing that the film has worked with an audience and that's not just worked in Australia, but in America and Sweden and Japan. I think every director just wants the film to work with an audience and any awards that come afterwards is uh, icing on the cake, yeah. Uh, we can hear in this film to Sarah Snook, to Cody Smith-McPhee, Eric Bana again, uh, to Jackie Weaver. Do you like the process of directing these uh, voice acting uh, performances? Yeah, I love directing actors because, you know, they come in for a very short period of time, very little rehearsal, there's no makeup, no costume. <laughs> they love that they, 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 they don't have to dress up or anything. Um, but, you know, the real actors are the animators and they're the ones who spend, you know, a year in the dark moving <laughs> these little characters around frame at a time and they're the unsung heroes. But having said that, you know, Sarah Snook and Jackie Weaver and Cody have brought such authenticity and fantastic performances. You, within, within seconds, the audience sort of forget that this is Sarah Snook and she, she you know, she really does become Grace. And uh, yeah, I, I'm so lucky I've had such a great bunch of actors. We even got Nick Cave, which <laughs> I don't know if Nick Cave's a big name in Spain. I'm sure he is, but he is. he's from Melbourne and Victoria. So we we're very lucky to have him. Yeah. I think it's really impressive that you have done this film with almost five million dollars. Would you like to uh, do a bigger film or you're comfortable I work in, in no I'm in very I'm very uncomfortable with my <laughs> budgets I they're always too low for example in this film because our budget was so low we couldn't do walking that's why Grace has no legs <laughs> so we do the Muppet effect so the character just walks on like this and there's very little talking as well because lip syncs very very slow and expensive so I've always had to compromise with my budgets and and it's it's tricky. So with the next film, we we definitely are trying to get more money, and um, so we can do some walking. Yeah. The film starts with uh, Grace reading her memoir. Do you see yourself writing your own memoir, maybe in a in a no graphic novel? I think I'm too boring to have a <laughs> memoir. Uh, you know, I'm a very boring person. I just I spend a lot of time in my room drawing pictures. You know, like a lot of animators, we we lead very dull lives. Uh, you know, I think my characters are me. You know, they're, they're based on my family and friends, but they're very, my films are very autobiographical. So there's a lot of myself in Gilbert and in Pinky. And um, making the films is very cathartic and it's almost a form of therapy. Uh, you know, I, I get out all my angst and all my anger through, through my art form. So I'm very lucky. Yeah. Pinky, I think she's such a scene stealer. It's not really common to see this kind of uh, depiction of elderly people. Was that something that uh, attracted to you? Yeah, look, I've always loved that film Harold and Maud, and I've loved uh, eccentric characters and elderly eccentric characters. 
characters who are who are not just wise but very colourful and funny. So Pinky is based on several people in my life who, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I have a lot of elderly friends who are, are quite odd and quirky, and um, so Pinky is an amalgamation of all of them. And and I think Pinky's a character we all want to become. And Sarah Snook said this to me recently. She said, "I said you enjoy playing great." She said, "I oh, really, I really." want to be Pinky. Pinky's the character I want to be. So this, yeah, Pinky I think is, she's very universal and represents a character that we all probably aspire to be. In what moment of the production did you record the voices with the cast? Well, you know, in animation we, we usually have to get the actors in first and then animate to their voice. But because my films have a lot of voiceover and narration, mm -hmm. we didn't have to get Sarah in until much later. So. Uh, we got her in about five or six times, Cody the same. Um, we never had the actors all at, in the two, same room two. at the same time. Every actor was recorded separately by themselves. Uh, so, yeah, we, we had a fantastic cast and they almost directed themselves. Yeah. You won uh, this year again at Annecy. How important is the festival for your career and for animation in general? Well, look, Annecy is the Khan of animation and um, winning any prize at Annecy is in incredibly important to any animator or director's career. And so to have now won the, the crystal twice is, um, is very important because it helps me get funding from our government in Australia. Um, Australian films are propped up by government funding. Mm -hmm. We're very different to America. I mean, in we're Spain similar, similar to yeah. here in Spain and France and Germany. You know, we need government funding to make our films. So it's been very, it's been wonderful to win at Annecy. But um, again, you know, a pri uh, winning a prize is like a bottle of good wine. You know, you, <laughs> you enjoy it, but the next day you've got to move on. You've got to hang over and move on. And, and uh, I tr again, tr I try not to think of awards. Do you see yourself uh, working in Hollywood? Well, I've been to Hollywood many times and I've got a lot of friends there and I have an agent. But, you know, every time I go to L.A., I think, well, it's not as bad as, as I thought it is. You know, <laughs> I look, I'm very happy in Australia. We, we're certainly trying to bring money into Australia for me to make my films. We, we don't have enough, enough financing in Australia to, to make the films. Uh, so, yeah, I'd like to bring Hollywood money into Australia, into Melbourne. <laughs> Thank you very much. I wish you a lot of luck in the Oscar race. But with the film that everyone gets to see it and uh, feel moved by it. Thank oh, you very thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Muchas gracias. Eh, seguimos con más entrevistas en Quinótico y recordad que podéis ver Memorias de un Caracol el 31 de enero en los cines. Gracias. <música>